Welcome to the final video in our series on joint and byproduct costing. In this video, we move away from the allocation of joint costs to the individual products and focus on the relevance of joint costs for decision-making purposes. Specifically, we'll be focusing on the further processing decision. For this video, we will begin by revising the basic idea behind joint and byproduct costing. We will then look at what relevant information is and consider how it applies to joint costs in further processing decisions. So remember, in a joint process, we take our raw materials, labor and overheads and we subject them to the manufacturing process in order to get out multiple products simultaneously. For joint processes, we cannot distinguish between the different products until a specific point known as the split-off point. Before the split-off point, we cannot trace the costs to the individual products. Therefore, we need a consistent method to allocate the costs to the products. These are the four methods we have looked at in our previous videos. After the split-off point, where the products are separately identifiable, the products may be subject to further processing. These further processing costs can be traced to the individual products to which they relate. Now the further processing decision, which we will be focusing on in this video, takes place after the split-off point, as highlighted on screen. What you should notice is that the joint costs fall entirely outside this decision area. It is key at this point to remember that the joint costs are allocated to the individual products for the purpose of inventory valuation. They are not allocated for the purpose of decision making. It is also important to remember that each of the four allocation bases we have looked at is arbitrary. There is no cause and effect relationship. So let's briefly talk about relevant information. In summary, relevant information differs under competing courses of action. It relates to the future it is received in a timely manner, and it can be either qualitative or quantitative. If the information does not meet these criteria, it would be considered irrelevant. So we need to consider whether joint costs meet these criteria. We're going to use an example to determine if joint costs would be considered relevant for further processing decisions. In this example, we have a company that produces two products in a joint process. The total joint cost to be allocated amounts to 400,000 Rand. For product A, we have an output of 10,000 units with a sales price of 25 Rand per unit at the split off point. For product B, we have an output of 15,000 units, which are sold at the split off point for 20 Rand per unit. We then see that we have an opportunity to further process product B into product X. This will be at a cost of 5 Rand per unit, and product X can be sold for 30 Rand per unit. Now pause this video and take a few moments to work through this example on your own to see if it is better to sell product B as is, or to convert it to product X. Okay, I hope you have your answers. Let us work through the example together. I have a table on screen with three columns. We will work through each column separately. In our first column, we are making the decision to sell product B as is, without any further processing. In other words, we are not changing anything in our current production. If this happens, we sell the 10,000 units of product A for 25 Rand each, giving us a total sales of 250,000 Rand. We then sell the 15,000 units of product B for 20 Rand each to give us a total of 300,000 Rand. We can add the sales of product A and product B together to get total sales of 550,000 Rand. We then need to subtract the 400,000 Rand joint costs. Because we are looking at the process as a whole, 
we don't have to split the joint costs between product A and product B. We can simply keep it as a total. Also, because we are setting both product A and product B at the split of point, we have no further processing costs. We therefore end up with a final profit of 150,000 Rand. We will now use the second column to consider the alternative option where we further process product B into product X. We will still sell the 10,000 units of product A for 25 Rand per unit. So this remains unchanged as 250,000 Rand. We no longer sell product B, but rather we convert it to product X. Assuming there are no losses in the conversion process, we convert the 15,000 units of product B into 15,000 units of product X, which we then sell for 30 Rand each, giving us a total of 450,000 Rand. We now have total sales of 700,000 Rand. There is no change to the joint process, as we still need to manufacture both product A and product B, so that we can then convert product B to product X. So therefore we still incur the costs of 400,000 Rand in total. However, we do now incur further processing costs of 5 Rand per unit of product B converted to product X. As we are converting 15,000 units, we multiply the 15,000 units by the 5 Rand per unit to arrive at the total further processing costs of 75,000 Rand. This will now give us a total final profit of 225,000 Rand. We can now see that converting to product X earns us greater profit and would be the better decision based on the quantitative analysis. We can, however, shorten the calculation by only considering the costs that change and are relevant to the decision. We will do this in our third column titled incremental. If we look at the information, we see that the sales from product A and the joint costs do not change. Because they do not change, they do not meet the criteria for relevant information, and therefore they are both irrelevant to the decision. This answers our main question on whether joint costs are relevant for further processing decisions. They are not relevant because they do not change under the different alternatives. We see that our sales for product B increase by 150,000 Rand when we convert it to product X, so we can put in the difference. Alternatively, we could have calculated it directly as the change in selling price between product B and product X multiplied by the 15,000 units. Likewise, our further processing costs also increased, so we can account for the difference of 75,000 Rand. Alternatively, we could have calculated the change directly as the 15,000 units converted multiplied by the 5 Rand further processing costs. This will now give us the incremental profit of 75,000 Rand. What is important to see is that the joint costs do not differ between alternatives. Thus, they are not relevant to a further processing decision. Now that you have seen the basic principles when determining if the joint costs are relevant to a decision, you should think about what type of decisions would cause the joint costs to change and therefore make the joint costs relevant to the decision. Give it some thought and type out your answers in the comments below. This brings us to the end of our series on joint and bar products. Be sure to join us in our next series.